This might be one of the most important videos that you're gonna see on transformations because this is a mistake that students make all the time. See, we have the square root function. Y is going to equal the square root of X. And we're gonna have transformations. And you can see I have a lot of different transformations. I have one, two, three, four. I label them for you. So I'm multiplying by two, multiplying by two again, adding a two, and I'm adding a two. So we gotta understand, or we gotta ask ourselves, what is the difference between these? Because these are not the same transformations. And what I'm gonna do in this video is show you exactly what these transformations are and explain it to you so therefore you can recognize like, oh, this is how we're going to graph this function, which we call the square root function. So the first thing we're gonna do is kind of look at some comparisons and some commonalities between these. What I want you to understand here is first of all, operation one or transformation one and two, they're both twos, right? But notice there's a difference, right? or one is outside and one is inside. So we have the square root, right? We have one outside and we have one inside. That is very important. But we also recognize that they both have multiplication. That is also important. So they have something in common, which is that multiplication. Now let's go and look at the next two. Number three and four, what do they have in common? And is they're both adding to the function, right? That's important. And what is their difference between them? The difference is between one is adding under the square root and the other one is adding outside the square root. So let's go and take a look then at some other characteristics. We have one and four. Right? Now, one is multiplication, one is addition, so that's completely different. But again, what do they have in common here? They're both outside of the square root, and then hopefully you can see where I'm going with this. Number two and number three, what do they have in common? They're both under the square root. So, we have a lot of comparisons, a lot of things going on. Here's how I want you to simplify this, okay? Or I want you to understand things in this regard. When you have operations that are outside of the function, okay, those are gonna be what we call our vertical operations. So, outside is going to be vertical. Then we have our inside. Well, if outside is vertical, what do you think inside is going to be? That is going to be your horizontal transformations. Okay, now, and it doesn't matter if it's the square root, if it's the quadratic or a logarithmic, it doesn't matter. This is going to work for all functions, okay? We're just focusing here on this square root function. So if outside is vertical, inside is going to be horizontal. Now we need to understand, well, what is the difference between adding and subtracting and like multiplication or division? In this case, we'll just see with multiplication. So if we're adding, or even if we're subtracting, that is going to be shifting, right? That's going to be a translation of the graph. And if we're going to be multiplying, what that's going to do is going to be a compression or a stretch. So again, it can be confusing if it's like less than one, then you can think about a division and you can think about it as a compression. But either way, it's going to be a compression or a stretch. I just want to keep things simple. I don't want to overcomplicate everything, okay? So now let's go ahead and take a look at this problem. But there's one thing though I want you to understand and one thing that complicates this problem, which is the reason why so many students get a problem like this incorrect because they can memorize a couple transformations, but then they always get stuck or they always kind of confuse one transformation with another. Before we go ahead and identify the transformations to like how do we graph this from this parent graph, I need you to recognize something. I have this two, these being multiplied by the x inside of your function, right? Well, it's very important when we are writing our function or with these terms, we need to make sure that we rewrite this, that we factor out that two and write it as a product of the two times the X and whatever our horizontal transformation is. So what we're actually gonna do is we're actually going to factor out this two first. Okay, so I want you to understand, I didn't really change the problem, right? It's still two times X, right? So we still have that multiplication going on but we just wrote it in this term. And this is really important because what this is doing is this is actually changing our transformation. A lot of times students will look at this problem and they say, oh, it's going to be a horizontal translation or shift, right? Left or right, right? Two, and that's not the case. You have to factor up this two. So now we can see it's a horizontal translation of one that is going to be horizontally, okay? So that's very, very important. All right, so now let's get to the fun stuff. So for number one, Let's go ahead and write down what each and every one of these translations are going to, our transformations are going to be. So number one, right? Remember, that was this two here. So that is going to be a vertical stretch. Whenever our two, or whenever our number outside of our function is larger than one, it is going to be a vertical stretch. Okay, and that's going to be a factor of two. If one was less than two or less than one, then we'd be what we call a vertical compression. You could also think about that as like division because it'd be a fraction, but let's just keep this as multiplication and just say it's going to be a compression rather than a stretch. Again, that's when it's between zero and one. So it'd be some fraction in between there. 
Now let's go and look at operation number two. Again, it's multiplication, right? But it's not gonna be vertical, it's now going to be horizontal. And here's the kind of confusing thing. Whatever's inside is kind of the opposite of what is outside. So we have horizontal, right? And a lot of students will say, oh, it's bigger than one, so it has to be a stretch. No, no, it's the opposite. It's actually a horizontal compression. Okay, and again, the same thing. If it was between zero and one, it'd be a horizontal stretch, okay? So very important, and I know it kind of gets weird. For number three, now again, this is still gonna be horizontal, right? Because it's under the radical. So we know it's horizontal, and we know it's a shift. But again, remember, we had to change this problem, right? That is going to be to the um, left two, it's actually going to be the left one. Now, before I actually get to this, let's actually go to four real quick. Because to understand three, sometimes would be confusing, so let's move on to four. So four is outside, so I know it's vertical, right? And positive, you just always think like, positive is up, negative is down, right? If you're thinking horizontally, vertically, positive up, negative down. So that one is going to be a shift of up two. So we can say a vertical shift of two. Now again, remember everything is of two, right? The only one that's of one is going to be that inside of that horizontal shift here. So that's where now let's, I wanna go back to the horizontal shift because remember it's opposite, right? Outside was vertical, inside is horizontal. Now this is a vertical shift up, right? What about the horizontal shift? A lot of times students will think positive, oh, positive, that means to the right, or negative would mean to the left. But again, go by that opposite rule here. If it's plus one, we're actually going to be shifting it left one. So therefore, this is going to be a horizontal shift left. And just remember, that's going to be a shift of one, and the compression is two, or sorry, stretch is two, Compression is two, there's a couple different ways you can go ahead and say that, and then my vertical shift is also going to be two. Okay, so that was a lot to understand, and a lot of times students think that the horizontal stretching compression is the exact same as the vertical stretching compression because you're just multiplying by two or you know multiplying by one half, but that is not the case. In the next video, I'll explain why.